Hey guys, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. This week's vlog may get a little bit exciting. I have a lot to tell you. I have a few things to share with you guys already. And then later in the week, I may have something very exciting to tell you, but don't hold me to that just yet. Like you'll know what it is if it comes. If not, it will be coming very soon. Just something, I have something very exciting to tell you, but I haven't told you yet. So we'll kick off with what I'm currently reading. And the answer to that is absolutely nothing. If you watch my weekend vlog, you will know that I ran over a little bit with Merciful Crow and finished it today. Day, so I have only just finished this. Literally everything I have to do this evening has rested on me finishing this book because I couldn't end the weekend vlog or start this vlog or do anything else until this book was finished. I will link that vlog up here if you want my full thoughts on this but I did enjoy it a lot. But currently I am reading absolutely nothing so I don't normally do this at the start of a vlog but I'm going to show you what is left of my book called Please TBR and what I need to have read by the end of the month which is... <laughs> all of these guys. If you have watched any of my vlogs recently, you will know that out of all of these very chunky fantasy sci-fi books, I am going to be reading Dot Dawn by J. Kristoff. You guys probably know this is the third book in the Nevernight Chronicle. It was just released a few weeks ago. I went to the launch in Manchester and I met J. Kristoff. It was very exciting and he signed my book. So if you guys know me at all, if you've been around here for any number of time, you will know that this is one of my favourite series of all time and this is my most anticipated release of 2019. I have been so excited to get to it that I haven't read it because I'm scared. I'm scared of what it's going to do to my emotions. I don't want this series to end. I love all of characters. I can't delay it any longer. When I put this on my Bukopoli TBR, I did it for two reasons. The first is because I actually want to read it and the second was to hold me accountable to reading this this month because when I got Kingdom of Ash last year, which was my most anticipated release of 2018, I put that book off for over two months because I was too scared of reading it. So I will be starting Dark Dawn today. I am buddy reading this. It's like a low-key buddy read with Ashley from Frolic Through Fiction. I pretty much made her go to the Dark Dawn launch with me, which then in turn made her read Nevernight which she loved so much that she read God's Grave and aside from me just generally hiding from my feelings and hiding from my emotions by putting this off she has kind of bullied me into postponing this so that we can buddy read it so she has already started she says she's three chapters in and she's already shook so that does not bode well that does not bode well at all but I will be starting this later on tonight there will also be a book diary for this you guys have been asking and asking and asking me if there will be yes there will I know I haven't posted a book diary in a while I've been really slack with them I have some filmed that are just so intimidating that I have not even got around to editing them but normally with my book diaries I will edit them in order so you wouldn't be seeing this until I'd edited like four others but because it's dark dawn I will be filming and editing and posting a book diary for you guys very soon probably in the next couple of weeks I'll probably leave it a little while after this vlog just so it's not like too repetitive with me reading it and then my full spoilery thought but a book diary is coming soon. Just realised I haven't told you what this series is about. This is a adult fantasy series. It is a grimdark series that follows 16 year old Mia Corvia whose father was hung for treason and whose mother was imprisoned and Mia escaped and was taken in by an old man who runs a curio shop who then prepared her for entry into the Red Church which is the country's most notorious and deadly band of assassins so that she would eventually be able to gain the skills to avenge her parents. She also also has some magical powers. She is a darkin, which is somebody who can manipulate shadows and darkness. And she has a couple of like pets that aren't real. They live in her shadow, but she has a shadow cat called Mr. Kindly. So we have the assassin political like revenge plotline, and then you also have the magic plotline. So that's what this is about, and I will be starting this later today. I would also like to start this this week, but I will get into this when and if I actually start it. But right now, this will be the next book that I pick up and start reading. So the second thing that I have for you today, if you remember a couple of vlogs ago I said that I had released the fall candles for Grace and Honey which is my candle making website and I didn't have any prototypes at the time. A couple of them were limited edition fall candles that I only do for a couple of months every year and I did add a couple of new ones but I had sent out all the ones I had at that time. I only popped in to tell you because the author of the Furies, Katie Lowe, bought some candles and I was very excited. But today I do have all four candles in the fall release to show to you guys. So we will start off with the limited ones. The first one is Cozy 
Daisy Fall Reads. And this one is scented with lemon, pumpkin, nutmeg, syrup, and vanilla frosting. So this is my pumpkin candle. And then this is what it looks like on the top. And this one, as you can imagine, is quite a sweet candle. Then we have a bunch of Hocus Pocus, which as you can probably imagine is inspired by the movie Hocus Pocus. And this one is scented with balsamic resins, patchouli, and herbaceous florals. This is what it looks like on the top. It has gold and purple glitter. And as you can imagine, this one is quite a herby floral kind of scent. Now, moving on to the two new candles that I have just introduced that will be available all year round. These two are inspired by two of my favourite series. Series. we will get into this one first so this one is catalyst and chaos if you have been watching my channel recently you will know that i have recently started the illuminate files and i'm loving it i'm reading obsidio this month this matches the cover of the books in that the candle is orange but if you can see here there are some red bits so you may find as you burn this candle that it will start to change color the scent on this one is pretty self-explanatory it is passion fruit and strawberry so as you can imagine it is a sweet fruity scent and the glitter on top is little gold flecks and stars and then lastly this is my favorite candle of the release i do really like cozy fall reads i like sweet vanilla scents which is why you'll find a lot of them in my store but my favorite scented candle at the minute this is my favorite scented candle that i have in the entire store so as you can probably imagine it is also inspired by one of my favorite series of all time so this is my new nevernight candle candle it is called pale daughter the label says that it is scented with vanilla cream and gold wine if you are familiar with the nevernight series you will know that in nevernight they call whiskey gold wine and the fragrance in this is vanilla and bourbon and as you may be able to tell from what you've seen of this in this video so far we have blood drips on the label and they continue all the way around on the top of this one we just have some red glitter and the smell of this one this is a really sweet one if you like me really like vanilla based ones this is a pretty sweet vanilla and then the bourbon just kind of adds to the sweetness but it gives it a lot more depth so this is my favorite candle of the release it is inspired by one of my favorite series of all time and it's currently my favorite fragrance that i have so if you are at all interested all four of the four candles are available on graceandhoney.net the link to the website is always in the description box and down there I do always have a 10% off discount code as this is my business I always say if you guys ever want to support my channel I probably will never start a patreon because the best way for you guys to support me if you want to is to buy candles because then obviously not only are you supporting my business but you guys will get something in return essentially and personally for me that works out a lot better than a patreon so obviously if you don't want candles that is absolutely Absolutely fine like don't feel bad for not buying candles but if you do at any point want to support my channel then the link to my shop is always in my description box and then finally the last thing that I have to show you today I honestly thought I would get through this update a lot quicker but you guys know me I can't shut up the last thing I have to show you is that I received this today now I think this is from Bobby however Bobby said that the things that she had gotten me would arrive on Tuesday so I'm not sure but if you guys don't know Bobby she does have a booktube channel it's called Bobby Reads too much and she is essentially just the sweetest most generous person she is friends with cody if you watch cody's vlogs you will be familiar with bobby bobby is very very generous and she just likes to give gifts and treat people so thank you very much bobby well i'm not sure it's bobby yet i'm pretty sure it's bobby if it is bobby thank you very much so let's get into this okay so this is quite a oh okay there's three things in here i have let me grab oops drop the note let me just check yes it is from bobby so thank you thank you very much bobby for these i won't read the notes yet in case they spoil it i'm not sure if all of these are off my wish list because bobby also said that she likes to buy things off people's wish list and then also buy other things that she thinks they should have so we have one two paperbacks and one hardback okay so let's see 
Okay, this is Grey Sister by Mark Lawrence, which makes me believe. Yeah, Red Sister and oh, Poppy, why? Holy Sister by Mark Lawrence. So this is the entire book of the Ancestor trilogy. I was actually, Bobby, you read my mind. Bobby at the moment is hassling me to read Dark Dawn because she has read it. She's waiting for me and Cody to finish it. Cody's finished it now. Essentially because she needs somebody to scream at because I believe that Dark Dawn is going to be very emotionally impactful. And I was thinking about this the other day because I was like, what? can I read when I'm done with Nevernight? And then I thought, you know what? Mark Lawrence has a very stabby adult assassin series that is very much like Nevernight in that we have our main character who goes to somewhere where she trains to be an assassin. I believe in this, it is like a holy order of assassins. They're kind of like nuns and it's like a convent, but for assassins. So this is the entire trilogy. Thank you so much, Bobby. I may need to binge this when I finish Nevernight. If I have like a massive gaping Mia Cover shaped hole in my chest, then it is very likely that I will be reaching for this series. It's crazy. Like how did, well, I was going to say, how did you know that I was thinking about this the other day? But I am about to go into Dark Dawn. Bobby knows how much I love the Nevernight Chronicle. So I mean, it's a pretty safe assumption that I would be thinking about this series. So I think the order of this series is we have Red Sister first, then we have Grey Sister, and then we have Holy Sister. Should I binge these? I really want to. I think I need to worry about the TBR. I have to get done by the end of the month first, but I'm like in such a Nevernight kick at the minute because I've just reread Nevernight and God's Grave. So these are a very welcome addition to my collection and I'm so excited to get into this series. Cody's read the series and loves it, which makes me believe that I will. We have very similar tastes. So once again, thank you so much, Bobby. You know me so well, like the one thing off my wish list that I'm gonna need to get through my Dark Dawn hangover. So thank you, thank you very, very much. So that is all I have for this update. I am going to go just film my little introduction bit for my Dark One book diary and then I have a couple of candle orders to send out. I've been holding on to these to show you guys so I can finally get these away to people who've ordered them. Although I have kept myself a Pale Daughter one because the prototype that I made, the very first one, I didn't do a very good job on the drips and because I'm going to read Nevernight and this is my favourite candle I have in the shop at the minute, I'm going to probably light that and read some Dark Dawn. And on that note, I will be heading off and I will check in with you at some point later in the week maybe to tell you a little bit about this i'm going to try not to talk about this too much i'll give you like the basics but obviously i can't do spoilers um all of that will be in my book diary but essentially i'll let you know how i feel it's probably gonna be sad have a cup of tea with me today because um I feel like we're gonna be having a little bit of a chat which I didn't expect until about five minutes ago so the first thing that I want to say is that last night I hit 10k 10k subscribers I was very happy about it I was just about to go to bed and I checked like the live subscriber count and I was on 9999 and I was like you know what I can't go to sleep until I get that one subscriber and it happened I hit 10k and I just want to say thank you first of all to all of you guys who watch my videos I know I put out a lot of them I make a lot of content some of it you guys may like some of it you may not I like to make a variety so that if there are some things that you aren't too interested in but you do like watching me or some of the content I make then you don't have to wait too long before you get videos that you're really excited about watching. It's funny actually because a lot of people say like when I started my YouTube channel I didn't expect to get this far and when I started watching booktube it was I think April 2017 and I made my channel in July and I mean I, I don't want to say necessarily that I never expected to get this far but I didn't really know that this far was a place that I could get to if that makes sense. When I made my channel I had only been watching booktube for a couple of months and some of the booktubers that you guys all know <laughs> that I first subscribed 
subscribed to. One was Ali from Hardback Harder. She was the second booktuber that I ever subscribed to. And I think a couple of months into watching booktube, or when I just started to make my channel, I started watching Chelsea from Chelsea Dolan Reads. And then a couple that I started watching just before making my channel as well were Elliot from Elliot Brooks and also Murphy from Murphy Napier. Now at that time I was kind of aware of the bigger booktubers like Emma Books and Hayley, Zoe and Hannah. I was aware of all those guys and I did subscribe to them. Now some people may think that I thought the the level of Emma Books etc was an achievable level to be but I kind of always thought like they were the celebrities of booktube so for example there aren't many general youtubers who will ever have as many subscribers as PewDiePie and I was obviously aware that the book community was a lot smaller than just general youtube so I thought like that wasn't even in my sights it's still not my channel will probably never be as big as any of those guys because they've been going for so many years but those guys are kind of the exceptions that are not many booktubers at all over 100,000 subscribers so that was something Something obviously that I never thought I would achieve. Now I think at the time that I started watching the other guys when I started watching Murphy I think she had around 3,000 subscribers. Elliot had around two. I think she was under 2,000 when I started watching her and I think Ali and Chelsea were both around 6,000 and I thought that they were big booktubers. Those guys have grown so much in the time that I've been on booktube but at that time when I started watching them I thought they were big booktubers like I thought six, eight thousand was my limit and to be here now <laughs> with 10,000 subscribers after sort of coming in with these illusions that 8,000 was big, like 8,000 was really big and I didn't know anyone kind of in between 8,000 and the people way up at the top on 100 and something thousand. So being here now with 10, it just, it feels weird. It feels really, really weird to um, have more subscribers than the people who I know consider like pinions of the book community. Like not staple channels because obviously you watch who you want depending on your reading taste but people who are well known and well loved in the community to have more subscribers now than they had when, I st when they were still big members of the community but with a much smaller subscriber count is just it's astounding to me so I just I want to thank you guys because my YouTube channel I've never given any illusions about this I like to make content that you guys enjoy but first and foremost my channel is for me and it always has been for me I made it for me I was dealing with self-confidence issues and I really like books so I made a booktube channel and I'm also somebody who likes recording things so I thought having a channel would be a good place to gather my thoughts so Thank you guys so much for watching my videos, for subscribing, for liking, for commenting, for sharing my tweets on Twitter, for DMing me and asking me how I am, for picking up books that I've recommended. I want to thank you guys for all of that because you guys have got me here. God, I can sit here for hours talking to my cameras, but if you guys didn't do what you do, then we would be nowhere. So I wanted to say thank you for that. And then, oh fuck. The other thing I wanted to talk about is something I don't know how to talk about. I don't want this video to get too long because my vlogs are generally long but on a side note I'm reading like two pretty long books this week so I don't think my thoughts on the books that I'm reading are going to be like too lengthy. So I thought if, if there was if there was ever a time to have this chat with you guys it was it was this week. So sorry if this is long I'm sorry if I'm added a lot of length to an already lengthy vlog. I wanted to talk to you guys about something last week but I didn't realise. <laughs> Um, how much of a, a deal it was at the time and by the time I did it was the weekend and I was making that sponsored vlog for Shelf of Cray and like time at the weekend just generally got away from me anyway. I, I feel like I should, I should get to the point actually. My point is that I'm not doing too good at the moment for the last week and a half now I have sunk into some kind of depression which it's not easy for me to talk about but I don't want to kind of further the stigma against mental health. I'm not ashamed to talk about bad mental health at all. I don't talk about it on my channel because while I have suffered with mild depression a few times in my life, those incidences were different than how I feel right now. One, because I kind of knew what the problem was and what was making me depressed and um, another thing is that I just haven't felt as kind of shit as I do at the minute. So back to the other tangent I was on. I wanted to talk to you last week 
but didn't realize how shit I felt until the weekend and I didn't really feel like I had time to talk to them and then yesterday I felt good you know like you'll be able to tell I haven't just seen yesterday's update the tone is very different and um I just felt like I was snapping back out of it because I do have bad days and like I said I don't want to make you guys think that I'm ashamed of my bad mental health I'm not but if it's just an off day there's no point me coming onto a camera feeling like shit just to tell you I'm having a bad day it's not a big deal it's a bad day like everybody has them whether they suffer with mental health or not I thought things were looking up and then I didn't want to tell you that I'd been feeling really shit over the last week or so if I was feeling fine now but today <laughs> I don't feel I don't feel good again I struggled I've been talking to some friends about this I've been talking to Ashley Gavin and Cody you know my YouTube besties because people do talk about mental health like Ashley and Cody they talk about their mental health a lot and so they should it is important to me to be incredibly open with you guys but even though you may not be able to tell because I do tend to ramble as I'm doing now I don't like to tell you things if there's no point like if I don't have a point to telling you something then I just don't and what I'm trying to say is that, like I said, I have struggled in the past with depression and every single time there's been a reason and I've kind of known what is at the root of the depression. But right now there is, there's nothing going on. There's nothing upsetting me. There are a couple of niggly things that have been bothering me over the last week that I am 90% sure have actually been caused by the depression as opposed to being the thing that is actually causing it. So when I'm telling you <laughs> I'm depressed, that's all I can really tell you. I can't tell you why and I can't tell you how long it's gonna last. I can't tell you a plan that I have to feel better. I'm just riding it out and I know it will pass. It will pass in a week or maybe two weeks. I will feel much better. But the reason that I wanted to tell you guys is that I was editing last week's vlog and that has been like a pretty well performing vlog like it has quite a few views more than vlogs sometimes get so I'm guessing that you guys liked it but I was editing that and I just did not like that vlog I felt like I wasn't myself I felt like I was kind of going through the motions of being like hey I'm reading this book this is what this book's about this is how I feel about it and then coming back and be like hey I finished this book these are my final thoughts and I felt like that was all that vlog was and I did read a lot last week so I was a little bit conscious of how much I was talking because I didn't want it to be really really long but at the same time I watched that vlog and I'm somebody who enjoys my own content when I have edited it and uploaded it to YouTube I always watch it back at like normal speed while I'm putting the cards in and I enjoy my own content I find my own videos interesting sometimes I will watch my own videos and be interested in what I'm saying and forget that it's me but I just did not like that vlog at all I was bored watching it back and that's when I kind of felt like I needed to say something him. just so you guys know that um if my vlogs may be a little bit off at points it's me it's me that's off um and i'm sorry i don't want to make bad content for you guys but making videos is incredibly important to me it is my main creative outlet i'm a creative person and as you guys probably know i spend a lot of time making content editing content reading books to make content so I don't want to stop vlogging because I don't feel good. I don't want to stop making videos. I may be slowing down a bit today. I should have had a video go up already. I haven't started editing it yet. It will be going up maybe tomorrow. I don't really feel like editing right now so it may go up on Thursday and there may only be two uploads this week but I don't want to stop what I'm doing because this, my channel, everything I do here, reading all the books, you guys are all incredibly important to me and that is something that I don't want to lose. It's not something I want to stop so I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm um I'm going through a little bit of a rough patch. I haven't encountered a problem with normal content yet. I still seem to be managing to bring my A game to normal content. But um as you guys know vlogs are a lot more informal and a little bit more personal. And yeah, I just wanted you guys to know that I feel a bit shit. Moving on from all the sad stuff, I will give you a little bit of a reading update. I will start by saying that I absolutely shit myself earlier because I poured a full glass of Pepsi Max onto Dark Dawn. I know, right? Luckily it was in a book sleeve and the book sleeve took most of the hit. I did, you can't even see, I think I damaged this corner 
and had to blow dry it out but it hasn't stained or anything. Crisis averted but I've never moved so fast in my entire life. I did start Dark Dawn last night. I read up to chapter 4 so I'm on page 32. I didn't read a whole lot. I was just really dragging my heels on starting this and I kept reading a page and then just stopping and scrolling through my phone because like subconsciously and pretty consciously like I know what's going on. I don't want to read this book. <laughs> I don't want to read it. I'm scared of it. I don't want it to end and um yeah but i have to i have to read it because i want to sort of but i don't you know you know what i mean you guys know what i mean it is already really good i am very absorbed in the first 30 pages that i read we have already had a big plot revelation that shook me and that was the last chapter i read before bed it was like five lines at the end of that chapter i was i was shook so i am excited to carry on with this tonight i haven't read any of this yet today and i need to edit that video but i just want to get in bed and read and sleep so i don't know what i'm gonna do uh, i did start another book because i want to be reading dark dawn and like focus on it if you saw the video that i put out a couple of days ago yeah it was like late last week i put a video out called how to read more and in there i kind of explain that i have more than one book on the go all the time and i kind of read one while i'm out and about like on my lunch and to and from work and then have one that i read at home so this is not the best out and about book like i will admit but i started a feast for crows by george rr R. martin today i'm on page 50 of this and i'm actually really liking it so far it's been a while since i read storm of swords and i think that that has helped because i'm going into this refreshed and i was just really enjoying what was happening i have only read three chapters but i have noticed that the chapter names are weird in this so first off i'll tell you what it's about or i'll tell you what it is because you guys probably know what this is about but this is book four in the song of ice and fire series by george rr R. martin it's a chunky one and oh the live show for this is going to be on the 29th of september at i think do we normally do it at 8 p.m bst so like 3 p.m est or is it edt at the minute i don't know time zone so this is the fourth book in the a song of ice and fire series which is the series of books that game of thrones is based on i'm hosting a read-along for this entire series throughout 2019 the reason that these chapters are weird is that we have chapters from different characters perspectives now i already know that this one is a little bit different in that we get perspectives that we've never had before i'm pretty sure that there are no perspectives of characters that are northern in feast for crows so i don't think we have Arya, sansa or john at all and that the perspectives in this are mainly i think they're mainly cersei brienne and jamie but every chapter that we do have like every perspective that we have is named like it says at the beginning cersei or jamie or whatever but the first three chapters that i've read one was the prologue and the second one was from the perspective of the prophet and the third chapter was from the perspective of the captain of guards now these characters have names they are minor characters um the prophet is aaron is he is it aaron or Eamon? aaron so it's Aaron Dampere, which is Theon Greyjoy's uncle, and then the captain of guards is Ario Hota, which is Doran, the Prince of Dawn's captain of the guard. I was also flicking through, and there is a perspective in here that's called the Princess in the Tower, and like that one's the Cat of Canals. I know who the Cat of Canals is. So we have some interesting named perspectives in here, which has never happened throughout the series so far. So I'm interested to see more of what they're about, and whether that's just because they're odd chapters. So like we'll never return to that character's perspective again throughout the series, but that has really captured my interest, and I am really enjoying this so far. As I said, I do ideally want to be reading one more chapter of this today because i worked out that i need to read 65 ish pages per day to be done before the live show which honestly that just it hurts it hurts me in the soul but i should have read this in july and august and i didn't even pick it up so i only have myself to blame that is all i have for you at the moment i'm gonna go and see if i can get that video edited and ready for tomorrow um i'm not sure what time it is it is 20 past 7 7 20 p.m so um i still have a few hours of my evening left and with the vlog being a weekend vlog i know some of the updates were kind of long but 
hopefully they won't take me too long to edit we'll see but sitting here talking to you guys is not getting that edited is it hopefully i will get to do some reading tonight and hopefully i will feel a little bit better soon but i have taken up a lot of your time which i'm sorry about i hope you don't mind too much but um i'm gonna go get on with some stuff now so thank you for listening to me ramble thank you for 10k obviously and i'll catch up with you guys i'll probably check in with you tomorrow hey guys so i wasn't going to check in with you guys today because i don't have too much of a reading update but what i do have is this big box that has arrived for me today so i will get to opening that in a minute i will start off with a little bit of a reading update i should also probably have a change of scenery at some point but i'm filming a book diary for dark dawn so i've left my ring light out for ease just so that i can just turn my camera on if i want to update that's proven pointless because as you will see in a minute i haven't read very much of dark dawn but it's easy for me to just turn my camera on and sit here so I have been doing and let's face it getting out of bed is not something i really want to do at the moment so we might as well just vlog here so first up we have dark dawn i did not read a lot of this yesterday i'm on page 54 wow i thought i was further than that but to start chapter six and we have had some more plot revelations and i was right about something that i thought was going to happen in this book so i'm happy about that but i am enjoying this so much but what happened last night was i told you guys i was going to edit that video and i was going to but my laptop is out of space so i started transferring things over to the network disc which was going to take a while because i was transferring like 50 gig but for some reason it wasn't working and i tried to starting everything and it just would not transfer so i couldn't import the footage onto my laptop to start editing it so i was like you know what i'll just do that today i have started the file transfer now and it is actually working so hopefully i will be able to get a video out this week which would be nice but yeah page 54 of this enjoying it i have read a little bit more of a feast of crows today i'm making a lot more progress in this i'm on page 102 i stopped like halfway through a chapter so i am gonna wrap up that chapter sometime soon and then i will be on page 110 of this i'm enjoying this a lot as well i don't know whether it's just because it's a later book in the series so it's a little bit better written you know like a writer's always improving their craft but I thought that this book would be a stagnant one kind of like Clash of Kings where I was just wading through it and I just wasn't interested in what was going on especially because of how much happened in Storm of Swords like everything kind of goes down in Storm of Swords but I am actually really enjoying this I'm finding it really compelling so far I will say that I was wrong about the chapters though there are chapters with John in here and there are also Arya chapters actually I'm not sure if John will be back at all because of the way that the narrative is being told but we do have Sam chapters in here and there are Arya chapters so John was in the Sam chapter, but I don't know if John will be back in this book. But yeah, I'm also enjoying this. So the big box I received, this isn't really bookish. It is in terms of who sent it to me, but contents it is not, but I am excited regardless. As you can see, I have opened it just so I didn't have to do that while I was filming, but I don't know what's, in well, I do know what's inside, but I haven't looked. So essentially it was raining a few weeks ago and I was excited that the fall weather had hit already because I like, as you can tell, big, thick cozy sweaters and coffee i love coffee now if you are not from the uk uk coffee is weird in that we don't generally have coffee makers in our homes like i know in the us like a lot of you guys will have your own like coffee maker where you make coffee from beans like we pretty much just drink instant coffee here and something that doesn't exist which i've always always wanted is coffee creamers we can get powdered milk but we can't get flavored type and we can get condensed milk but i I've never tried putting that in coffee and I would be scared to. We can get flavoured instant coffee but if you go to a normal supermarket like I've been to two supermarkets looking for flavoured instant coffee recently because I'm almost out of the one that I've got and we don't have them. We have normal instant coffee there's coffee bags which are pretty new and there's also like sachets so you get like a latte and a sachet but I'm not a huge fan of those because they tend to get a little bit lumpy so anyway I put a tweet out and I said like oh I wish I could get coffee creamers in this country Autumn the wonderful lovely Autumn who is a great supporter of my channel she leaves really long comments on most of my videos and we also talk on Twitter she has kindly sent me some coffee creamer so um I don't know what the flavors are but we will find out together so it feels like there's two boxes in here and and then there's also two cards so we'll see what we got we'll start with the boxes i'm sorry but hershey's hershey's do creamer i am shook so this one is chocolate caramel and they are the little cups see we have things like these if you go to a fast food place like mcdonald's and ask for a coffee they do do lattes and stuff now but if you get just like a standard coffee you can get little things like this but 
they don't sell flavored ones here so this one is chocolate caramel which is exciting and then the second one is ooh, french vanilla which autumn did ask me what flavors i like and i said pretty much anything coffee but things like vanilla and cinnamon are my favorite so thank you so much for these awesome probably gonna wait till the weekend before i try them out but i will definitely come back and let you guys know what i think about them i won't read them out to you but awesome did also send me two cards with these she sent me this one which has like a pretty long message in it and this one just because the theme goes with the coffee creamers so once again like thank you awesome i will definitely let you guys know my verdict on these like i said i'll wait till the weekend until i try them out but i have I'm very excited. I'm very excited for my first coffee creamer experience. But that's all I have for now. I think I'm going to go and get a shower and then I'm going to see if I can finally edit that video. I'm not super in the mood for editing right now still. So I'll see how I feel after a shower and hopefully get that video edited and then do some reading. traditional Victorian Christmas. Parlor games, goose, and figgy pudding. Oh! <laughs> English pudding. You, you get yourself all the Money, guys. I am looking a little bit rough. I have woke up maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. I have quite a few things to tell you, but it is very early in the morning and I will be back to tell you those things a little bit later on today. But the reason I'm here right now is that I made my first coffee with the creamers that Autumn sent me. This one is the French vanilla one. We're here for the taste test, so are we ready? Oh my god, that is, oh. oh god, vanilla is like my favourite flavour. Taste test completed and the verdict on the vanilla ones is that they are really, really damn good. Hey guys, so I'm popping in with a little bit of an update because I said I would this morning. And essentially the reason I need to pop in and give you an update is not because I've read a lot, because I haven't, but because I have a very exciting announcement to make. Now, you may have seen this on Twitter, and it's the announcement that I've been hinting at since the end of last week's vlog and the beginning of this week's vlog. So, essentially, <laughs> there's no way I can kind of really lead up to it, but I have bought a house. I'm going to be moving. I currently live with my dad. If you didn't know, myself and Curtis, we live with my dad. And and we haven't moved out because we didn't want to rent. We were saving for a deposit on a house. So you may have also heard me say quite a few times in my vlogs that I've been going to the bank and I've had appointments at the bank. That was all mortgage stuff. At the beginning of summer, we decided just to go to the bank and see how much we could have for a mortgage because we weren't quite sure. So we went to the bank and we found out and then we looked at a few houses. We weren't finding anything suitable in our price range. We kind of decided to give up until we'd at least been on holiday because to be honest, we could have done with they're saving a little bit more money towards the deposit and all the stuff that you need to get when you get a new house. We saw one on a whim and Curtis booked us a view in. We went and looked at it and we absolutely fell in love with it. We are moving into a Victorian terraced house. It was built in 1860, I believe, and it is absolutely stunning inside. We were looking at new builds before on newer builds, but with a new build house, you just don't get what you get from an old house. For example, some of the houses that we were looking at, they had oddly shaped rooms because they try and fit as many rooms into the house as possible. We had some that had like really low ceilings where like I couldn't have even got my bookshelves in the spare bedroom to have as a reading room and the windows are tiny there's hardly any daylight in new build houses so we kind of we didn't know what we were going to do we needed a lot more money to get a better house and then this one came on the market it is absolutely stunning the windows are huge it's been extended so it's got like a big kitchen the main bedroom is pretty big there's an attic conversion we even have a cellar I'm not sure what we're going to use that for, but we do have a cellar. So yeah, we bought a house. We will be moving in three to four weeks. We don't have an exact date yet, but 
it is coming very very soon essentially i was solicitors rankers at the beginning of the week and said that the date could be the 4th of october which is less than two weeks from now and i was just like no I can't do it. I can't move within two weeks. We haven't even started packing because obviously at the beginning of the process of buying a house, you're never sure whether you're actually going to get it. There are lots of people who have dropped out of sales and if there's chains, everything can collapse. So we haven't prepared at all. We've hardly started packing. The extent of the packing we've done is that I packed up that one box of books when I was reorganizing my bookshelves a little bit. That is literally it. We didn't buy anything because we have no room to store it. And then obviously if it collapses, we've spent money on things that we no longer need. So yeah, we just couldn't have moved on the 4th at the minute we wanted to push it back until the end of the month so the 25th of October but the person who currently owns the house really wants the sales to go through at the beginning of the month so we could be moving on the 11th which is still really soon and I'm a little bit scared about it but if it happens it happens. I'm excited to move. I'm very excited. I will have a reading room. There are two sitting rooms in the house and one of them I will be using as my reading room. We went back to the house yesterday to buy furniture of the current owner because obviously as people who are buying our first house we don't really have a lot and I realized the place I wanted to put my bookshelves they're not gonna fit so I don't know what I'm gonna do about that yet but um I am very excited. I'm excited to have a lot more space even just down to the fact that Curtis likes playing guitar and I like to read and at the minute that is all happening in one room and it doesn't really enable me to read very well when I have a guitar in the same room as me and this room is pretty big but still an acoustic guitar it is very loud if you're in the same room as it. I am of course um also a little bit sad about moving because I have lived in this house for five years with my parents. I moved back home after uni and we won't be taking any of the pets with us which I might get sad just telling you guys. So um, there will be hardly any Rosie in my vlogs. Um, I could take one of the cats if I wanted to but they're triplets and I don't really want to split them up they've been together their entire lives and the saddest thing and i may still cry is that um i won't be taking the dog um i tried i tried but she doesn't technically belong to me so she won't be coming with me either and just living in a pet free home is going to be strange for me I'm a massive animal lover as you can probably tell so that's going to take some adjusting too because we can't get a dog at the minute we both work full time and we both work the same shift so it's not really fair to bring a dog into the house we may get a cat eventually I may change my career at some point which will give me a bit more free time but at the minute there will be there will be no pets and as Curtis and I are very much project people we spend a lot of time working on separate things he works on his music and he also streams video games whereas I read and make butchie videos we don't spend that much time together maybe a couple of evenings a week we'll watch some television or something together he also goes to open mics and things with his friends he goes to see his mum once a week so I'm gonna be on my own a lot which I'm happy about but I'm also not happy about so it's just I'm, a, I'm an emotional wreck anyway this week obviously it's inevitable I have to move out at some point and everybody's sad when they leave home everybody's sad that they don't get to be around the family every day and that they don't get to be around the pets or the family pets but you know I can come home <laughs> whenever I want to and see my dog um but yeah I'm just very emotional in the ter in terms of the fact that I already haven't been having a great mental health couple of weeks and this may have something to do with it honestly subconsciously and just that it's so soon I've kind of been going along with my life as though this huge lifestyle change and big deal for me isn't happening so yeah you guys know I've been feeling some type of way and um this could be why but I am overall I am excited this is a big step for me and it will obviously be very exciting I will be taking you guys along in my vlogs we will have moving vlogs painting vlogs all sorts of vlogs I want to build some shelves so we can have some watch me fail at DIY kind of vlogs I guess but there is a lot to be done the reading room the room I'm going to be using is red at the minute it's burgundy and I want to paint it pale grey so you can probably watch me swear and get frustrated as I paint on coat after coat after coat of paint but yeah that's a big secret I've been keeping from you for around two months now since we first put the offer in and it was accepted and that is it 
I'm moving and I feel all types of ways about it. As for how that will impact my channel, I think at this present moment, because I'm moving pretty much in the middle of October, I am going to be cutting back my schedule just throughout October, I think should be fine, to two videos per week so you will have your weekly vlog and then just one extra video and sadly I will not be participating in any readathons in October either because I don't think I'm going to read that many books and I have some books that I kind of have to read so I'm sad about that because I'll be missing spookathon and all of these spooky themed readathons but it can't be helped. So that was my exciting announcement that I've been waiting to tell you for quite some time. Sorry for getting it a little bit emotional there. It's kind of like these things that go on in your head all the time are kind of fine while they're in your head and then as soon as you start talking about them it's it like it makes it real you know makes it real so as for a reading update i haven't read a lot of a feast for crows i'm on page 110 so i finished that chapter that i was reading last time i updated you and dark dawn i have made quite a bit of progress since i last checked in i'm on page 216 of this i love it i love it it's upsetting me it's hitting me in the feels there are moments that are just tearing at me i haven't cried yet if i had then you would have seen it in a vlog because i'll do what i did when i read kingdom of ash and just put like no context sobbing in so when i cry which i probably will you will see that but there are, have been a couple of moments that i've found really emotional there are lots of moments in here of just being around friends so mia is surrounded by the cast that has been built up through the first and second book and they've just been having like little moments obviously this always always happens in last books in a series when you have a big friendship group the author will take the time to really build those relationships and really cement your feelings so if you didn't love the characters before then you will love them now and then a whole lot of them probably die. That tends to be the way it goes. So we'll see if there's any super, super shocking deaths in here. But I have been enjoying the moments of just hanging out with the characters because I feel as a reader in a final book in a series, even if all the characters aren't going to die, which we know straight off that at least one of them is, but even if all the characters aren't going to die, I feel like it gives the reader time to say goodbye to the characters. So in these moments of downtime, you kind of just get to, spend time with them when they're not super distracted by this looming evil that they're about to face and everyone just gets to hang out normally and you just get to like chill out with your favorite characters before you get to the end of the book and one way or another have to say goodbye to them forever so that is how my reading is going not sure i'm going to finish that this week i'm not quite halfway yet but i'm very much enjoying it i have decided not to post a video tomorrow just because of how i've been feeling i thought i may as well just sack off the entire week i did obviously post the shelf of crate vlog the video that i I had planned for tomorrow was quite a complicated one. In case you don't know, I don't normally plan my videos a whole lot. I um, kind of make bullet points and then improvise and this is one that I really need to plan and I'm not really in the headspace to really nail down this idea and be able to execute it well right now. I'm in, as you can probably tell, more of a rambly, spill out my inner monologue kind of mood as opposed to giving you like quite a factual, well-developed video. And then I also don't have the creative energy to think of something else to post tomorrow so i've just decided that i'm not going to bother this week and then next week all of my end of month and beginning of month content will be starting like haul tbr wrap up etc so i'm gonna go back to my full schedule next week and then we will be in october which is the month that i will be moving and we'll probably be on two videos a week so that was a super long unnecessary update and kind of i just wanted to tell you i was moving and it kind of um turned into a let me spill all my problems <laughs> to you kind of situation which was not what I intended when I turned the camera on but I'm gonna go now because I'm not posting a video I'm going to go play some Elder Scrolls online read some of Dark Dawn and edit start editing this vlog I'll edit the first clip because I know I've been doing some really long updates this week but um I'm gonna go get on with some stuff just chill out a little bit and I will talk to you guys later on good morning guys it is like 10 a.m and I just woke up once again, so it is time for another taste test. This one is the Hershey's chocolate and caramel one. So, um, let's see, let's see. Mm. Mm. This one is also very good. I can't believe I've lived without coffee creamer all this time. Like what, 
what is going on i need i need more i need more coffee creamer mm. i have to say i do prefer the vanilla one to this one but this one is also really nice i think the thing about creamer as opposed to flavored instant coffee is that it adds like the creamy taste so it's a much smoother much sweeter flavor than flavored coffee if that makes sense. I'm just gonna do a little bit of a quick check in now, just because I am only on page 225 of Dark Dawn, and I also have 700 ish pages of A Feast for Crows to read before the end of next week. And tomorrow I'm starting a buddy read of Crooked Kingdom with Jade from JD Ray Reads. So I'm a little bit stuck i don't know what to do i don't want to rush start dawn and i don't think i'll have it finished today anyway because like 250 pages is a lot for me to read in a day so yeah i don't know what i'm gonna do but um too many books and too little time is what's going on here so i'm gonna go and enjoy my coffee and do some reading and yeah i'll check in with you guys sometime later on today to wrap up this vlog I'm really smart. Smart. Good smart. Good smart. Good smart. Good smart. Good smart. Good smart. Oh, it's the best smart. <laughs> hey guys, I'm just popping in to wrap up this vlog pretty much i have not managed to finish a book this week but i am making really good progress in dark dawn i'm 320 ish pages into it now so i have around 150 pages left i've read 100 pages at least today i am loving this so much we are in the action now and just like the things that are happening it's uh obviously i can't say anything about it which is really upsetting as i said there will be a book diary so you will hear more thoughts on this but guys the stuff that's going down and it's just keeping me on edge all the time so many things are happening that are making me feel anxious for the characters but i don't want it to be over but at the same time i'm really enjoying myself so no books are finished today i will mention though because i haven't this entire vlog both this and a feast for crows are on my september bookopoly to fulfill the challenges to read adult fantasies but but yeah I'm not doing I'm not doing so good with that right now am I I've spent a lot of my evening like I've been really busy today I've packed up a whole ton of candle orders I don't have too many outstanding orders now which is great I feel like every time I hit the bottom of my orders like a whole load more come in but I'm feeling pretty good about orders at the minute I have cleared absolutely everything up until things that were bought yesterday and I still managed to get some of the orders placed yesterday out today as well so I'm feeling really good about that I've also made a really big start on my vlog because because obviously I didn't post a video today. I wasn't filming and editing yesterday, so this week's vlog, as you all know at this point, is really fucking long because of the length of the first two clips and then the clip from yesterday. So I made a start yesterday by editing the first really long clip and then today I've edited up till yesterday's really long clip. So tomorrow, when normally I would be spending a long time editing, I don't have too much footage to get to. I only have the footage from yesterday and today to edit. I'm excited to to get back to my schedule as well this week has obviously been pretty rough I'm feeling pretty good now you guys will know obviously I was feeling pretty good on Monday so things could take a turn again um, I wasn't 100% when I woke up this morning but at the minute I'm feeling pretty good I'm feeling pretty accomplished the thing with me personally taking a break is that it doesn't help me because yesterday I was trying to chill out and play Xbox I was like look I've committed not to not posting a video um, I've done some reading today I want to play some Xbox but I start 
to feel really unsettled and restless really easily which is one of the reasons that I started a booktube channel to begin with because I was having issues with feeling restless and feeling like I wasn't doing anything and feeling unproductive so I'm kind of glad that I took the break for this week because I just was not in the mentality to either film or edit as we know from how long it took me to get that weekend vlog out but I am eager to get back at it I'm going to be filming on Tuesday and it's nearly time for October hopefully already so I'll be getting back into it and thank you so much to you guys for your support and your understanding I didn't apologize for not posting because I know if I did you guys would say don't worry about it look after yourself etc and it's not like I feel guilty about not posting but thank you to you guys anyway so I'm gonna go wrap up this vlog hopefully I'm not gonna finish this tonight, I might finish it tomorrow. I'm starting a buddy read tomorrow, so I, I should finish it. And obviously I have the entirety of A Feast for Crows to get through next week, so it's gonna be a busy week. But as I said, I'm feeling pretty good at the moment, so hopefully we'll get through everything without me getting stressed. But thank you very much for watching this vlog. If you made it this far, I know it's very long. Please don't forget to like this vlog if you liked it and subscribe if you want to. And I will see you guys next week. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate You say you're a go when nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no